14 laps away, the European Talent Cup riders at Motola and Aragon and Alcanese ahead of the penultimate race of the season. Race one was thrilling to the very end and we can expect no different in race two. 17 corners lie ahead of these young stars of the future to master as the championship destiny is one step away from being sealed with Carlos Cano with one hand on the trophy, but all eyes on Marco Morelli and what he can do from 10th on the grid. It's a match point to the Spaniard, but anything can happen in European Talent Cup. So the question is, can anyone catch Cano? Well, four races down, two to go here at Motorland Aragon for the penultimate round of the FIM Junior GP World Championship. And we have European Talent Cup race number two ready and waiting coming up next. Liam Hodgins and Conor Doherty taking you through proceedings for the final two races of the day where Carlos Cano took third spot just behind his main championship rival, Marco Morelli. So the championship is now down to 21 points, but they were all chasing Giulio Pugliesi on the CF Moto Aspar Junior Team squad. Yeah, that first race, Liam, was absolutely sensational from start to finish. We've got such incredible talent on display and such incredible goats as well. <laughs> the goat power, we don't need horsepower right there, but goat power, it seems to be. Well, who is the goat? Who is the goat in ETC, Liam? I'm gonna put you under the microscope. Who's your goat? My goat has to be the one that comes out on top in the championship here this year. I almost said weekend, but I'm tripping <laughs> up over myself because it could be all wrapped up here today with Carlos Cano only needing four points more than Marco Morelli to wrap up the title here today before the season finale in Valencia. And this is how it all played out in race number one earlier on today. Carlos Cano from pole position got a sluggish start and dropped outside of the top five with Marco Morelli coming through from 10th, trying to get a swoop round here. said before there was contact in turn five between Cano and Morelli, early stages of the race, but it was Christian Daniel Jr., the young American rider, that was leading from the off. Further back, Agostinelli on bike number 90, he played a massive part in the race before he eventually took over the lead of the race further into the proceedings. We saw Valentin Peroni pull off into the long lap penalty loop. There was this big crash here between Tamburini and Da Costa. Thankfully, both riders were okay. Agostinelli on bike number 90 and Jesus Torres on 22, battling for the lead of the race before Torres would eventually have to pull out after contact with the number seven of Fernandez later in the race. Back at the front, Agostinelli leading the way from Gonzalez, Tinez, the young Venezuelan part of this battle as well from Marco Morelli, who went from fifth all the way up to first before Pugliesi took advantage at turn number two, battling side by side where Morelli and Pugliesi with Cano getting involved in the closing stages of the race, putting this move quite brilliantly on his chief championship rival at turn seven. Before this move on Pugliesi, but ran a little bit too deep, the rear end came round on Cano and he almost threw himself to the scenery. With a couple of laps remaining, it looked like it was a battle between the top seven or eight, with Morelli making a move on Pugliesi through the flip-flop before the back straight. However, Pugliesi got himself back to the front after this move from Carlos Cano. Gonzalez was out of the action. And on the final lap, Pugliesi at turn number one took full advantage and held on to the line as he came across the line to record his second victory of the season with Morelli and Cano just behind him in second and third. And a big result for Marco Morelli to pull that advantage back into 21 points ahead of race number two as Pugliesi will hope to double up here in Motorland Aragon ahead of race number two, which will be coming up in just a matter of moments. Well, we could be expecting another humdinger here in Motorland Aragon for European Talent Cup race number two. We thought Moto2 race one was a barnstormer. Race number one for European Talent Cup took that and revved up to number 11 in terms of the excitement scale. And we're expecting more of the same from race number two. Absolutely, the ETC keeps on giving. And I am so happy to be here with you, Liam, in the commentary box as we watch each of these riders try and wrestle the uh, top spot from Carlos Cano. Marco Morelli, for example, in that first race, managed to do what he had to do, and that was finish ahead of Cano. Yeah. Pugliese, though, was uh, just that little bit better. Yes. 
it was just very close towards the end of the race as we see air temperatures up to 24 degrees celsius track temperature hitting a massive peak of 36 degrees celsius not quite what we expected here today a couple of degrees cooler than we, what we thought and well we could be expecting big things in today's race will we be crowning carlos cano as the 2024 european talent cup champion i think we saw just after race one how much winning means to the young spanish rider it was his first podium of the season that wasn't the top step and he was so angry with it that he stormed off the podium, not even spraying the rose water as Morelli and Pugliese were joining in the celebrations. Yeah, I mean, that's a, uh, a champion's mentality, I suppose. That's what we saw earlier today. He'll be desperate to win. That third place finish just isn't good enough for a rider, a young rider, however young they might be, who has become accustomed to winning. And normally when he finds himself on pole, he does win. He's done that before in Estoril. He's done it in the Algarve. He's done it in Jerez. And he hasn't done it yet, at least, in Aragon. The good thing about Aragon is they have two bites of the cherry. And here's a rider that has a second bite of the cherry to potentially pick up his first podium. Christian Daniel Jr. goes from second on the grid. Picked up seventh in race one. Could have been better, but with three laps to go, he ran a little bit deep at turn 14, which kind of took him out of contention and the latter stages of the race. But Tinez, another rider chasing his first podium. He will be well and truly in the mix throughout this race, just missed out on what could have been a first podium for the young Venezuelan. Yeah, the young Venezuelan who was exceptional in that first race, finishing P4, of course. And we've seen him challenging at the front of races in previous rounds. He's just maybe lacking that bit of experience, that little bit of luck, perhaps to get over the line and find himself on one of those podium steps. Yeah, could race number two be the day where he picks up his first podium? Same goes for Luca Agostinelli, the Vietnamese rider, was just brilliant in race number one. We never expected to see him fighting at the front quite as he did, and so early in his career. It was so close to being his best result in European Talent Cup. Sixth place, second top 10 of the season, and Agostinelli, after featuring so prominently at the front, will be hoping for a podium here today. Yeah, that was absolutely breathtaking from Agostinelli last time out. He was at the front of the race at specific moments, just unable to make it stick. And, well, this time around, he's got another chance, as you said, Liam. The diminutive Mickey Lou in fifth place on the grid. And the character is Mickey Lou. And we promise you, that is, there's nothing in there that will be playing a mockery of what his race pace could be. We, we assume it's going to be water or at the very least some some energy drink in that hip flask there. But Mickey <laughs> Louie is a character <laughs> as the young American rider. Yeah, absolutely. And it's great to see the fans now flocking to Motorland Aragon to watch on for this ETC race too. Or flocking to get an acute figure was ever in side that, that hip flask of Mickey Lewis. Anyway, we shall move on with Alejandro Fernandez, starting from best grid position of their career. Picked up 21st, probably a result they, they would have thought would have been a bit better considering where they are on the grid. Yeah, but absolutely excellent work from here. Yeah, Alejandro Fernandez co coming under the banner with the AC Racing Squad for this race weekend and of course stepping up to Red Bull Rookies Cup in 2025 making it through the selection process so great to see Alejandro Fernandez part of the Red Bull Rookies Cup and of course part of the AC racing team here in the European Talent Cup going from the outside of the second row so Gonzalez a rider that is now out of championship contention for Gonzalez will be looking to at least just take victories in the last couple of races of the season. He either finishes second or third, however, in race number one, he did miss out on that after a bit of a moment at the final corner. Yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't for that moment, he looked very much on course for another podium finish. And that was actually the first race this season in which he hasn't finished on the podium if he has finished the race. So it's very unlikely from the young Spaniard. As indeed, we just saw there Jesus Torres if he had no bad luck, he'd have no luck at all with Torres. If he's not getting taken out by somebody, he's getting taken out by his own bike. And 
his own bike took him out of race number one. He was in that victory battle for much of it, so he'll be hoping to make amends in race number two. Carpushin, he had another good result in, well, yeah, he was in course for a good result until early drama put him out of contention, but Carpushin, we hope to see that he won't come under any threat from any weary base power. Cena locked the front in, uh, on lap number one, in turn number nine, and skittled out Carpushin. Now, Marco Morelli, this could be potentially the biggest race of his life to stop Carlos Cano from wrapping up the title here today. I must remind you, if Cano is to be champion, he needs to leave here 25 points ahead of Marco Morelli. Here we have then the starting grid, row one, Cano, our pole sitter, followed by Daniel Jr. and Tinez on row one. In row two, Agostinelli, Lou Fernandez, row three, Gonzalez, Torres and Carpushin. Behind them on row four, we do have Morelli. He's with Galan and Peroni. On row five, Alcina, Bujosa and Bayon. On row six, Gabarini, Pugliese and Rostagni. Then on row seven, Fernandez, Nicolis and Trouchot. On row eight, Miroslavov, Almeida and Kratochvil. On row nine, Gutierrez, Boxberger and Kayet. On row 10, Therpa, Tamburini and San Juan. Now as Carlos Cano sets away on his warm-up lap, we're now looking at Marco Morelli, the two riders in championship contention. The 71 of Carlos Cano with the 72 Motorsports Art Box squad and Marco Morelli on bike 97, part of the M Lab racing team. Now, it's going to be one for the ages here in Motorland Aragon with the castle looking over the circuit from Alcanese. Who will be king of the castle here today, Connor? <laughs> Liam, you're putting me in the spotlight. Now, I cannot decide who would dare make a decision judging by what we've seen so far in the ETC. It's such a dramatic, exciting class for a swim joy, and any one of these riders could be the one taking the win. We see people coming from the middle of the pack and claiming a podium finish. We see Morelli, for example, last time out in Jerez, starting from the very back and getting involved in that podium fight. Then we see the track temperature is 38 degrees Celsius. That is significantly warmer than the first race that we had here at Motorland Aragon. So that's something else for these riders to bear in mind as well, Liam, as we prepare for race number two in the ETC. Yeah, we've got a cracking 13 lap coming up ahead of European Talent Cup race action here in Motorland Aragon. Just a few riders there just trialing out the long lap penalty loop. And just in case they pick up some indiscretions in <laughs> this race. So they're just practicing whether they can find some grip on the outside of that corner. So championship looks like this. Cano, Morelli, Pugliese, outside bet for the championship with 50 points still on board. But he did, race, he did win race number one. So he could bring himself back into championship contention if the top two, especially Carlos Cano, are outside the podium positions. What, how will be Cano's mantra in this race? What will be his thinking? What will be his game plan in this one? Will he just be trying to stay out of any probable contact? Will he be getting himself involved in the scraps? He is very young, he is very motivated, he is potential a champion and waiting, and you have a feeling he will get stuck in. Yeah, absolutely, he's such a precocious talent, and maybe they tell him one thing in the box with his team, and then he goes and does another, because he will want to get stuck in. We know what it means to him to win. We saw it earlier on the podium, and we'll see it again if he doesn't manage to at least fight for that P1 spot. Christian Daniel Jr. getting himself amped up for this one. Just doing a bit of a boxing. I don't know what it is, actually. I've never <laughs> boxed in my life, but I know it's something to do with boxing. However, Christian Daniel Jr. going from the middle of the front row. Carlos Cano on pole position. Revs are rising lights out. Oh, Has Cano oh. got another bad start? We've got a rider. That's Agostinelli. Fingers crossed. Everyone can avoid him. Well done to all of the other riders who did avoid Agostinelli. I think we may have got another bike that 
may have just gone pop in the background, or maybe it was just a dust being kicked up from these European Tank Cup Raiders. However, that's such a disaster for the Vietnamese Raider who was part of the of the battle. Yes, we do. We have the 29. That was a 29 that had the the orange meatball flag shown to. So the 29 that further down, that's Powell Cena. Sorry, no, it wasn't Powell Cena, that's a 26. So the 29 was all the way back. True show. That, that's true show. Well spotted there, Connor. So hopefully there's no liquids being put out on the track and we might have to get a red flag here in European Tank Cup. So hopefully it's just a bit of smoke and nothing else on the 29. So back at the front, it is Carlos Cano leading the way there is the black and orange flag being shown to the 29 to get off the track immediately so you don't put any liquids down on the circuit. So hopefully the 29 of Trisho has seen that. The only rider I can imagine will be hoping for a red flag will be Agustin Ellis so he can go from his fourth place grid position again. Yeah, absolutely. That was so unfortunate for Agustin Ellis, especially after we saw how well he performed in race one. I think I just saw a rider pulling off to the left-hand side of the screen, the right-hand side of the circuit. Not sure if that was the 20. I can't imagine it was. It looked like they were further up in the pack. So I'll have to keep an eye out on that. The timing monitors, if anyone else is dropping down the timing speed, it could have just been my eyes playing tricks on me. However, back at the front, the top two in the championship are first and third in this race with Christian Daniel Jr. just behind them. But Gonzalez, who has no love lost, with Carlos Cano sitting in second. Oh, look at Gonzalez now. Is he going to make his move on Cano? It looks like he might do, but who is Here's that Daniel. coming out of nowhere? Oh my God, Daniel. <laughs> Christian Daniel Jr. He took two for one in that one, but then slips back to third, but he's crucially ahead of Marco Morelli. Taking off lap number one. Here comes Gonzalez, looks across the Carlos Cano. Maybe gives him a little bit of a wave, pulls a kiss, <laughs> who knows. But oh, Carlos Cano later, Morelli oh, from fourth to move. first. He's taking the initiative, he's leading this race, and he's shuffled Cano back, not to second, but to third. Cano leans on Gonzalez, who turns number two, and Gonzalez is pushed out wide. I think this is the battle that we all wanted to see at the beginning of this round in Aragon. Cano and Morelli, Gonzalez is in there as well, but what a battle we're going to be treated to over the 12 laps that remain. Here comes Gonzalez, we know that he likes to put an aggressive move on Carlos Cano whenever he can, oh. and he's done so through turn five. Can Cano come back? No, Gonzalez is looking for a move up the inside of Morelli, who will remind you has come from 10th position on the grid. The rider that I did see could pull off the circuit was Pau Alcina on the 26th, Team Australia Galicia, so a big shame there for the Team Australia Galicia rider, Pau Alcina, who has DNF'd twice in the opening two races here today. Now, back at the front, Marco Morella leads away from Gonzalez, Cano, and that's Tinez, Kermin Tinez, who finished fourth. Oh, bit of a bobble there from uh, Cano on the curb, exit turn number 11. Gonzalez up the inside, Cano up oh, the inside, goes Morelli round the inside. Oh, that is brave because he's ready on the inside, could tuck the front and take you and himself out. Oh, Morelli's just where he needs to be as well, starting from P10 and now he's already leading. He took a while to get going in race one, this time he took no time at all, Liam. Yeah, we did see in race one, he was back in 11th at one point at this stage of the race. This time round, he's now <laughs> taken one of those ones out, throwing it in the bin and he's left himself with P1 and race number two, however, how long will that be? Because the number 11 is powering down the back straight, looking for a move on Cano. Oh. And Tinez is looking to move on Cano. Cano looks oh. like he's just taking a little bit tentatively in the opening stages of this race. That's the Tinez we know and love. The one that's not <laughs> even remotely concerned about giving it a go going into a corner like that. Side by side, here comes the top three. Cross the line, Morelli leads up, but Cano, he got such drive out of that final corner. He's back into lead of the race, but Morelli, oh, oh, contact. Oh, there was contact. Did he run over Cano's foot? We've seen that a couple of times in other series, and it could spell disaster for Cano. We'll hopefully get a replay of that one, but that yeah. was very close indeed. So Morelli back into lead of the race from Gonzalez, and Cano has been shuffled down to third, but will he stay there for too long? No, he won't. He was looking for a move on Gonzalez, and that's the seven of Fernandez again. Beyond Fernandez, the seven who we did see come to the forefront back in Jerez is doing it again here oh. in Aragon as Morelli sets the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, what about that? A 2.04.5 from Morelli, who is 
really just going for it now. David and Gonzalez as well is also right on the back of his tail. A lot of time spent talking about Cano and Morelli, but what about Gonzalez? He didn't get on the podium in race one, and he had done in all the previous races that he finished. Here we have that moment between Cano and Morelli then. So close. Did he get close? Oh, Cano just pulls his foot back before Morelli runs over it. That could have been really really something that we do not want to see that could be curtains almost potentially for the championship battle if he ran over the foot and Cano picked up an injury from that thankfully there was no such problem for Carlos Cano but the problem is Tinez is giving him a headache now so instead of having some aspirin for a broken foot potential he's now got aspirin for a headache does Carlos Cano so the top five breaking away down the back street. It's a 10-wheeler at the front. There's a bit of a gap back to Christian Daniel Jr. Where is your race one winner, Pugliese? He's now made a move on beyond on this lap. So Pugliese is now starting to make his way forward in this race, as is Valentin Peroni, who slots into the chase of that second group. He's into sixth. I think we have to give Pugliese so much credit for just how well he's doing, starting from P17 as well. That is absolutely sensational from the Italian rider. Yeah, incredible stuff from the Italian. Like three of Brexit, as we saw at last lap. Later of the late Brexit, Morelli just keeps throwing that M-Lab racing machine at Carlos Cano. Cano Look had Cano. to back out Look of it. Cano. <laughs> Cano around the outside, no he's not. But Tinez up the inside of Fernandez. And fastest lap of the race, we just spoke about him, Valentin Peroni, the number 73, who's looking to make amends on that to drop one position after he took his first ever victory in European Talent Cup back in Jerez. Yeah, that was an absolutely incredible race. And it almost looked like a photo finish. It felt like a photo finish. And if it wasn't for that drop one position, he would have taken the top spot on that rostrum in Andalusia. Here comes Cano. Cano's oh. back into second. Gonzalez, that's the rider he doesn't want to be battling against because Gonzalez leaves him absolutely no room, no love lost between these two. And Gonzalez, latest of the late breakers. Cano is just taking it tentatively on the brakes. He would normally just throw it up the inside of Gonzalez. However, he knows how Gonzalez would give it back to him if he put a harsh move on the 11. And Gonzalez, for the time being, staying stationary in second position. And this is just allowing Morelli to get away at the front, but Tinez coming into the battle for second. But this time around, Cano has that move done well and truly before they get to the breaking zone. Yeah, he really does. And I do wonder now, Liam, if what you said before was correct, and he's just taking it a bit more cooler, a bit more calm, a bit more relaxed, not getting involved in any battles, not getting too close. We saw him getting very close with Morelli with his foot earlier, but he's just trying to make sure that he finishes the race. Yeah, as long as he finishes inside the podium, I'm sure he will be, well, I'm sure he won't be happy, to be honest, <laughs> after what we saw in race one, but I'm sure he'll take that going into Valencia. He'll be hoping to finish in front of Morelli, but if only he loses a couple of points to the Argentine ride on bike, 97 leading the way, I don't think he'll be too disgruntled with that, considering the gap is 21 points at the moment, and he'll go into Valencia with still quite a healthy advantage. However, if we put the flag out now and he finishes third, it will come down to 12 oh, points, Cano. but that's not good. Last, here comes Gonzalez, the press once again, and Morelli, is he going to be late on the brakes? Oh. oh, sideways, punts out Cano, he goes wide himself, and Gonzalez takes full advantage. No, he doesn't. Morelli, this is what we want to see in European Talent Cup. Every time Cano gets close to Morelli, Morelli's just going to fight back immediately on the Spanish Raider. Yeah, Morelli, absolutely sensational there. It looked like he might have had to fall back a bit, but no, he takes the opportunity. And now he is still leading. He also is the fastest in Sector 3, so he's leading, and he's also setting the pace. I can't say that he's got nothing to lose, but he kind of does, does Morelli. He needs to beat Carlos Cano at every opportunity. I must remind you, if Carlos Cano does win this race, it doesn't matter what Morelli does. The championship oh, will be over. Oh, looking back, looking and back. Where's Cano? <laughs> yeah, just making sure that Cano is shuffled into the pack and he's not quite because he's leading that second pack as Morelli has gapped them by a couple of big lengths here through the corkscrew section. Here we go once again, three abreast into the breaking zone. Latest of the late breakers. This time, Carlos Cano doesn't quite get his foot close to the rear wheel of Morelli, but the rear wheel almost takes it the front wheel of Cano. That was so close, Liam, that to what we saw earlier that I thought it was a replay of the previous action again. Yeah, exactly, it does look very similar. Morelli is so happy, so brave to hold that around the outside, but Cano, this is what he wants. He's now leading the way, and it's now Morelli that's coming under a bit of attack from Gonzalez. Gonzalez back into second. Morelli, he has been leading most of this race so far. He's been shuffled back into third. Yeah, he has been, but this is chopping, this is changing. 
and who knows who's going to emerge on top here between these three riders for the time being. But behind them, they've got hungry young riders as well in the shape of Tinez, in the shape of Fernandez, Peroni, of course. And Pugliese in the, th the bike 31, he's just passed Daniel Jr. He's coming to the forefront of this race as well from 17th on the grid as Fernandez on the inside of Tinez. So across the line, eight laps remain. It's Carlos Cano leading the way from Gonzalez and Marco Morelli. He's just out of shot, but Gonzalez, he pulls out of the slipstream alongside Cano. Cano's later of the late breakers and Morelli this time around crucially wasn't close enough to make a move on Marco, uh, on Carlos Cano. Yeah, we've become accustomed almost to seeing Morelli making a move there. This time he just wasn't close enough maybe, or maybe he's happy enough just hanging a bit back and letting these two battle it out at the front. Yeah, he potentially is just taking stock, letting his tires recover for the time being. He knows he's got Carlos Cano just in front of him, so he's not panicking too much just yet, considering the top six are well and truly gone with this one. However, on that previous lap, I want to keep an eye out on your race one winner, Giulio Pugliese. And the reason I want to keep an eye out on the CF Moto Aspar Junior Team winner is because on that lap, he set a low th two minute 3.1 and he was six tenths of a second faster than your leader. He's jumped up 10 places already, Liam. Pugliese is really some rider and he's showing us that. He showed us it in race one and he's shown it again in race two here in Aragon. Yeah, great stuff from the CF Moto Aspar Junior team rider, the Italian of Pugliese, who still has a chance of putting himself into championship contention going into Valencia, but if it finishes the way it does now, well, he'll be out of championship contention as well, Morelli, because Carlos Cano will wrap up the title if it finishes the way it does at the moment. So Carlos Cano leading the way, two and a, uh, seven and a bit laps to go, not two and a bit laps to go, not quite done just yet <laughs> and European Talent Cup but Carlos Cano that's been a full lap almost that he's led the way so the Spanish rider looking to not just pick up his sixth victory of the season but also the championship as Gonzalez has a little bit of a look up the inside yeah. Morelli's back in with it so is Fernandez and Tinez Peroni though Where's Peroni gone? Peroni's dropped behind Pugliese. So not sure what happened to Peroni. He was with us leading group of five, but he's dropped off the boil a little bit in that last lap. So Pugliese, he's now up into sixth. Coming across the line, a two minute, 2.9 for Tinez. He was the fastest rider on track. I scrapped that, actually it was Pugliese. So the Aspar rider is almost on the back of this group. Here is the championship. 30 points would be the championship standings. That would give the title to Carlos Cano, your race leader, but Gonzalez, he's happy to make a move. Sit there, no, not quite just yet. Carlos Cano, happy at the front. This is where he wants to be. He wants to be out of the action. However, his main championship rival there in third. I don't think Marco Morelli is too worried about sitting there and letting Carlos Cano lead the way for now. No, I'm sure Morelli isn't too worried about what's going on in front of him, but Gonzalez is actually being very clever. He's making sure that he makes his move at the right time because if he makes it too early and doesn't make it stick then Cano is going to punish him and Morelli might as well so he needs to bide his time and wait for his opportunity you can really feel the tensions rising here with six and a half laps remaining Carlos Cano leading the way from Gonzalez Marco Morelli looking to stop Carlos Cano from taking the championship here today Fernandez looking for his first podium in Junior GP so is Tinez on bike 27 who makes a move on Fernandez he does the fitted work mere racing rider on 27 as up into fourth position now just behind the top three with Pugliese and Peroni just off the back of this group trying as they might they're edging ever closer to the top five are Pugliese and Peroni just out of shots yeah, I'd be really concerned if I was a rider ahead of Pugliese with sword he's capable of in race one. And my word, is he going quick through this group? He really is indeed. Pugliese has now gapped Valentin Peroni as Gonzalez makes a move on Cano. No, not this time round. The Bumblebee just remains <laughs> in second. The double one, the number 11. He's not had victory in 2024. Oh, he would so dearly want to taste victory here today, and it'd be even better if he can take it from his better rival, rival Carlos Cano. So, one more lap ticked off. Lap eight, we've just begun, and it's still Carlos Cano leading the way from Gonzalez, Marco Morelli, and Tinez with Fernandez just off the back. On that lap there, Pugliese was a couple of tenths slower than your top five, so he'd never gained any time on that lap. He actually lost some time 
that put Liesi. So maybe he's just taking stock for the time being and then we'll have another charge towards the end of this race. Yeah, well, Kano still leads. And this is a more oh. of a conventional race. Sorry, Connor. Pugliese was just out wide there. He's now lost one, maybe two positions. So Pugliese, I think that might have just put paid to his chances at the podium. So he was pushing on, was Pugliese. As Carlos Cano looks over his shoulder, so does Morelli. Just to see how many are in the group. There's five in the group for the time being. But oh, Peroni is just off the back of it. Did you see a bit of smoke coming from Fernandez? Or was that just the light glistening off the, the tarmac and just completely throwing me off course. I think maybe that was just me seeing things there. <laughs> There's still a bit of mist hanging around, Liam. Yeah, there is. I'll just blame it on the mist that is hanging around. I think that's best. So over the crest of the hill, down towards turn number 12. Well, we have a move for the lead. Not quite. The rest of the riders are just quite happy letting Cano lead the way for the time being. He's setting a good pace in the low 22-minute threes. Uh, Martinez was the fastest rider on that previous lap at 2 minute three zero. So it was a couple of tenths faster than your race leader. Yeah, but such small margins here, it's just a tenth of a second for each of these top four, really, uh, for the time being. This could change any any time, but it is more of a, uh, as I was saying earlier, Liam, a, a conventional race from Canada. Ordinarily, we see him at the front when he starts on pole. We didn't see that in race one, but this time around, unless Gonzalez is finally making his move. Not quite. Not quite, not quite. I thought maybe it was coming there. Morelli, I thought, was about to swoop around the outside of both of them for a second. Well, he's, he's on the inside. Well. So Morelli's uh, starting to now wind the wick up again, now starting to attack Gonzalez just in front of him. However, for the fourth lap in a row, it's Cano that leads the way. Well, Gonzalez make a move on Cano. Cano's so good on the brakes into turn at number one. Doesn't give the three, four riders behind him a chance to close up on or to make a move on the championship leader. Now, it looks like this top five are off and running. Peroni on that previous lap was a uh, two minute four. So he was eight tenths of a second slower than your leading group. So this is a really good pace at the front being set by Carlos Cano. And it's only Gonzalez, Morelli, Tinez, and Fernandez that are able to go with the championship leader. The champion elect. Now Morelli is shipping up a move into turn seven, not making it stick just for the time being as Gonzalez He's quite happy to just sit there behind Cano as Fernandez takes a look over his shoulder just to see that it is a 10 wheeler at the front and nobody else looks like they're joining him. Yeah, all of these riders have been much more cautious than we saw in race one. There's much more at stake as well, obviously, with only one race to go after this in the final round of the European Talent Cup in Valencia. So there's so much on the line here, Liam. At the moment, it's Cano. I have absolutely no idea which way this race is going to go, but maybe Morelli oh. will have a... Something to say about that? No. We have seen how good Held Morelli bit, can though. be on the brakes, so I think he is just holding stock for the time being as the Argentinian Raider as Canos. Is it, just, it looks like he's having some rear end moments coming through. Yeah, we're shaking 13. a bit there. Yeah, the rear end is going as we're looking at Emilio Alzamora and the 72 Motorsports Art Box squad. They might be crowning another superstar in the hands of Carlos Cano in just four and a bit laps time. Cano leading the way. Gonzalez in the slipstream. And Morelli not close enough on this lap. It is a leading group of five. Peroni is dropped right into the clutches of oh. Pugliese. Pugliese is out of this one as well. He has given himself too much work to try and catch his top five. As we find round the final corner, four laps to go. Cano leading the way from Gonzalez, from Morelli, from Tinez. Tinez hasn't done anything so far in terms of the battle for the top three, but with four, and a, four laps to go, he might do it. But Look Morelli's Morelli going now. sideways, goes Morelli. He's back into second now. What has Morelli got up his sleeve for Cano just in front? The first and second in this race. First and second in the battle for the crown in the ETC. Liam, more drama, and I do not know what I can do here. Here we this go, is Morelli. incredible. Morelli's going for it. He's just a bit too far away. So Morelli took stock for five or six laps. Let Cano lead the way. Let Gonzalez just sit behind Cano. Now Morelli, he's now starting to come to the fore in this race with three and a half laps remaining. The title is on the line. Carlos Cano will be taking the championship if he wins this race. Marco Morelli needs to make a move. Is the move coming into oh. this? No, it's not. I thought maybe it was about to come into the corkscrew. He just sits there in second for now, but it looks like He's got a bit more pace at the moment, does Morelli. Cano, he's just holding a steady pace at the front and the rest of them just seem to be happy to sit there for the time being. What Morelli will want to do is try and ruffle up Cano with the last couple of laps, which will allow Gonzalez, Tinez and Fernandez to take advantage of 
Cano being shuffled back through the order. Well, I'm sure he's more than happy to do that. Over the sector one, he was marginally quicker. And he was also marginally quicker over sector two, not quick enough to make a big dint in the gap that Cano has, but it looks like Morelli is ready to make his move if Cano makes any kind of slip-up. These are the top two in the championship. These are the best two in European Talent Cup for the entirety of 2024, possibly the best Talent Cup riders in the world at the moment. Marco Morelli got such a run down the straight and he's already alongside Cano as we come down towards the final corner, round the S end, but Gonzalez going for a move on Morelli. Oh, if one of them tucks that? the front, that could be game over. It will be lights out for the championship, but Gonzalez that was clean and clinical, as you like, from the number 11. Three laps to go. Cano still leading the way. Gonzalez, Morelli, Tinez, they're in the battle. Fernandez there as well. Top five within a couple of tests. Oh. Morelli from third to first. Backside goes wide, goes deep. Oh. Cano back in front. Gonzalez is there. So Morelli, he was too deep on the brakes. He's gone deep, he's gone wide. So as it is as you were, with Cano leading the way from Gonzalez and Morelli back into third. Talk about title fights. This is closer than ever. We're so rarely treated to competition like this. Not just in motorsport, but in any sport. And these two are giving it everything they've got. This is absolutely incredible stuff from such young riders, some with such inexperience and global level. But Cano and Morelli are showing their prowess. Cano looks over his shoulder again, sees that the same four riders that were there a couple of laps ago are still there as Gonzalez. What's he got up his sleeve? He's just happy to sit there to Morelli. I thought it was about to make a move. It's so difficult to make a move through that right and left the corkscrew section of the track. Morelli tried to make it stick. However, we know that he's quite happy to make a move either up the inside, around the outside, or over the top of you, potentially, if he needs to. <laughs> Absolutely, but he is running out of time. He's going to make a move here. Three laps to go. And is this, oh, they thought Gonzalez was about to make his move as well. These three have been sensational so far. Yeah. Looks like a bit of a moment there for Gonzalez coming out of turn 12 on the rear end. That's allowed Morelli a move up the inside. No, Morelli's just happy to sit there still for the time being. Will it come down to the final corner? Will it come down to the drag to the line? Two and a half laps remaining. It's advantage Cano, not just in terms of the race, but also the championship. F is stays as is with the checkered flag coming out now. It will be the championship to Carlos Cano. Emilio Alzamora there looks quite content and happy with how it's going so far. But with two laps to go, we know there's going to be an explosion of excitement coming the way of European Talent Cup. Tinez and Fernandez, they're still there for the time being, but looks to be a little bit out of touch from the top three. Morelli needs to make his move as Cano has gapped him across the line we go. Two laps to go, Cano leading the way from Morelli. He got Morelli up the inside of Gonzalez. He's Pete back two. into second. That's important for the championship. He needs to make that stick. He needs to make his move on Cano now. So Morelli into second with two laps to go, Connor. He absolutely loves that overtake, doesn't he? Now he's made it stick. He needs to really catch up with Cano and take the fight to him if he's going to be with any chance. Uh, Here we go. Getting... Here we go, Connor. Yeah. Up the SA. He's, he's, he's oh, done it. He's he's done it. Here comes oh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Three three Gonzalez. Gonzalez in the middle. It's going to be contact. Who's oh. it going to be? Morelli on the end side. Oh. Gonzalez switch back to the end side. Team ends oh, as well. Rest. And Cano, latest of the lead breakers. He sets up and Gonzalez comes through. But Morelli leads away from Cano. We knew it was about to hit Fever Bank. It has. This is European Talent Cup. And Cano of the SA has to set out to bed as Morelli takes the lead through the corkscrew. Yeah, I'd watch out for Cano now as well, though, coming out of the corkscrew. So, with a lap and a half to go for European Talent Cup race number two, if we put the flag out now, it'll be 16 points between the top two. But Cano doesn't want to wait for Valencia. He wants to win it today. He's making a move on Morelli up the SA, down the hill towards turn 12. Who's latest up the late breakers? Here comes Gonzalez. Morelli around the SA, chops the front off the number 11. So, Cano again leads the way with a lap and a half to go. Yeah, Cano's looking. Very, very good. He is being overtaken here by Morelli in this fight, but he's always managing to find his way back to the front of the Morelli. pack. Or is he? Uh, I thought he was going for a move there. It looked, it like, looked like it, yeah. It looked like Cano had a bit of a moment there through the right-hander. Now, has this just allowed Cano to get away ever so slightly? It looks like Morelli's lost a bit of slipstream on this lap, but he's now managed to make it back up again. The top five, all within your shot, 10 wheel in the front, and Morelli chops the front, across the front of Cano. Yeah. Was, uh, that was a brilliant move Absolutely. there, just to try and slow down the progress of Carlos Cano into the final lap of the race we go, into the final 
of what could be a championship winning season for Carlos Cano, side by side Cano and Morelli, and Cano has advantage, but Morelli, his latest of the late breakers, he's not doing just quite yet. Fernandez, he's out of it, it looks like in fifth spot, so the top four are the riders that could be battling out for the race victory here. What can Morelli do? What can Gonzalez do? Yeah, absolutely, Morelli had been making a move at that first corner earlier during the uh, race. He'd made it later in the race as well. This time around, he wasn't able to do it. Here comes Morelli again. And that could again. be playing into Cano's hands. Now, Morelli, he's not oh. shown a bit of a moment there for Tinez, I believe. Now, this is what Cano wants. With it, the flag going out now, it would be 26 points. Look at Emilio Alzamar. He's been in this position so many times in the past with the Marquez brothers. He knows what it's like to taste victory from the pit wall. Morelli is climbing all over the back of Carlos Cano. Carlos Cano has it. Here oh. we go, Morelli up the inside into the course. Good stuff. He's not close enough just yet. Carlos Cano still leading the way. 26 points, it would be uh, the way of Carlos Cano. And that means with 25 points on offer back in Valencia, it would be championship to Cano. But here comes Marco Morelli. He got the run out of 10 over the crest of the hill. Latest of the late breakers into 12. Oh. Cano is latest of the late breakers. Is Morelli happy to sit there? And so will he wait for Cano. the last corner? Will he wait for the last corner? Gonzalez is still there. He has a part to play in this as well. Oh, this is absolutely incredible. Here comes Morelli. Oh, Morelli. Oh, the Morelli. He sets up Cano. Morelli's he sets up Cano. Morelli's made a stack. Cano's in the end zone. One, then well, on the switch back. Cano's on the switch now. back. Cano leads away. Morelli. Gonzalez. He's now into second. No, he's not. Morelli's there. Morelli has he charged too soon. Cano has the advantage. Oh. Here we go. Final lap of European Talent Cup. It looks like Cano has it. Cano looks like he's got it. This is it for the championship, potentially. The 71, Carlos Cano leads into the final corner. Carlos Cano is about to be crowned your European Talent Cup champion of 2024. Marco Merrill tried his mate, but couldn't put out anything to Carlos Cano. Carlos Cano is your champion. That was absolutely sensational from Cano. From start to finish, from pole to the win, Carlos Cano is the EDC champion in 2024. What a battle with Morelli, right to the penultimate race. But look at that jubilation. My goodness me, that's how you want a championship to be won. On the final lap, all the way down to the wire, and Carlos Cano, well, he held his nerve, he came out on top, and everything that Marco Morelli could throw at Carlos Cano, he soaked up the pressure and stayed cool, calm, and collected, and Carlos Cano, the emotions are now flooding as Cano is now your European Talent Cup champion for 2024. Yeah. And really, it's chapeau to Carlos Cano because he has been so good, particularly in the second half of the season. He struggled maybe a bit at the beginning, but then from Estoril onwards, he has been almost unstoppable, an absolute juggernaut of a rider and very much a deserved laurel for his crown. European Talent Cup champion 2024, Carlos Cano. Well, the Castillo de los Calatravos looks over the circuit from Alcanis and Carlos Cano has crowned himself now king of the castle here in Aragon. What a performance from Carlos Cano. And he's about to be given the champion's crash helmet and of course the championship winning t-shirt. The seven's been ripped off that bike and they're also trying to rip off the number one to put on a champion's number one on the front of that 72 Motorsport art box machine. But what else can you say about Marco Morelli, Connor? He threw everything at Carlos Cano in that race, went, took it all the way down to the final lap, took it all the way down to the final corner, but just missed out so, so close for Marco Morelli. But yeah, I'm not sure Marco Morelli could have done much more over the course of this campaign. He was so good at the beginning and then he had a bit of bad luck and you have to think he's going to be ruining some rounds. Jerez, for example, he was so good, but things just didn't go his way in qualifying and that meant that it could be that that's cost him this title. Today, he was again absolutely sensational. We can't forget that he started from P10 and got into that battle. He was in P1 on the last lap and he just couldn't make it stick. Yeah, congratulations to Marco Morelli. as a team photo with also <laughs> Alvaro Carpi and Guido Pini involved in uh, the celebrations with Carlos Cano. It's a really strong team affair with the 72 Motorsports Art Box squad. Carlos Cano 
the second victory of the season. <laughs> Vamos, they say to the camera. Vamos and Felicidades to Carlos Cano, your new European Talent Cup champion. And Emilio Alzamora, he knows how to pick them, doesn't he? He took the Marquez brothers to championship glory in the world stage. 125cc, Moto3, Moto2, and of course in the hands of Mark Marquez, MotoGP on eight occasions. Potentially some more in the future for Mark Marquez. However, he's got another superstar on his hands in the name of Carlos Cano. Will we get a burnout? Yes, we will. As we see Carlos Cano's championship best moments from 2024. Carlos Cano, your 2024 European Talent Cup champion. And he was very distraught after race one, after finishing third. And that's a mark of a champion. Being upset with anything other than P1. And he went out to make amends in race number two. He knew that if he took victory, it didn't matter what Marco Morelli did, he would be champion. And a champion's wheelie down the street, down towards the corkscrew. And well, I'm very much looking forward to what he says to Connor Doherty when he gets back into Park Burmy. Big wave to the camera and big celebrations await Carlos Cano. Only 14 years of age and you can expect big things. Remember that name, Carlos Cano. Now this is what the last lap looked like, the last couple of sectors and we just missed a moment when Marco Morelli, well this was a couple of laps before Marco Morelli chopped in front of Carlos Cano but he came across the line to start the lap of the race. Carlos Cano held it brilliantly into turn number one over his championship leader. Now, this is the move that almost carried the, the championship into Valencia. Morelli got the initiative on Cano, but had a bit of a bobble coming out of turn 15. Cano got onto the power a little bit early, got the drive out of the corner, and that meant Cano just had a bit of an advantage down the back straight and was able to hold on through the final corner. Big shame for Morelli and the MLAF team. They've put such an amazing performance in 2024, just missing out on the championship. You know that Marco Morelli will go on to bigger things as well. Another name to watch out for. I mean, Carlos Cano, you can imagine, will be battling it out in future series for many, many decades to come. As the marshals and all of the circuit workers congratulate Carlos Cano, our first champion in 2024. And at number one, I must admit, looks absolutely glorious on the front of that 72 Motorsports art box machine. Just soaking it all in is Carlos Cano, really soaking up the adulation from all of the marshals and circuit workers who quite rightly and quite brilliantly have come out to congratulate your brand new champion. Watch him coming back into, well, the corner that won him the championship just five minutes ago when he was getting chased down by Gonzalez and Marco Morelli. Gonzalez, we have to talk about him as well. Another great fight back for Gonzalez, but once again, the bridesmaid almost taking second place. With so many second places, so many second and third places in 2024, just missing out to, or missing out on victory. And usually to this rider here on screen, Carlos Cano. Carmentinez, another fantastic ride. That's two fourth places today and a rider from Venezuela who's really starting to make his mark on the motorcycling world at first podium is just around the corner and Fernandez running in the top five. However, all the celebrations will be talking long into the evening about Carlos Cano and how he was magnificent, the maestro of European Talent Cup in 2024. We saw him after race one, just standing in that garage after being weighed. Not quite happy with how it went in race one, however. 
that will be all forgotten about now as he will be about to lift the biggest crown in European Tank Cup. Champions crown and of course the race winners. <laughs> the championship t-shirts. The team have already got them all on. Just like a rock star has been thrown high into the air. Crowd surfing with his team. Brian Udiarty down there as well, congratulating his teammate, Brian Udiarty and Guido Pini. Pini we just out on the circuit with Alvaro Carpi celebrating the championship with Carlos Cano. And Gonzalez once again, can't be too disappointed. Full gas, vamos for the next one in Valencia in about five weeks. So we just saw Marco Morelli getting consoled by the team. Such a valiant effort, thumbs up. And Marco Morelli and the MLAF team, they put, all, they put it all in through everything, including the kitchen sink, and showing good grace by celebrating and congratulating the new champion, Carlos Cano. Marco Morelli can be very happy and hold his head high with the performance so far this season. Many podiums along the way, including two race wins in Mizano and, of course, Catalonia. And, of course, winning in another series in the British Talent Cup over in Thruxton as well, did Marco Morelli, so he was showing what talent the Argentinian has. No plan B, but I think plan A has gone as well as it could, possibly could for the Argentine rider, and we look forward to seeing what he can do in the future and of course in Valencia where he has another chance of taking at least a victory in, and a third victory in the class. So Carlos Cano we see him just heading over to the interview area. Our 2024 European Talent Cup champion takes victory here today, his sixth victory in 2024. The perfect way to seal the title. We get to hear from your new champion now, he's down in Park Fermi with Conor Doherty. Carlos, that was an absolutely incredible race. And now you are the ETC 2024 champion. Tell us how you feel. Yeah, I don't was. Uh, the race was incredible. Uh, I, I am very happy the champion, the win the champion. And the, every year I work very hard with, with my team, all my, my trainers. And I am very happy. I don't have words. Uh, I thank people who support me, all my team, all my family, all my trainers, and, and my grandma and my granddad. Uh, this is incredible. Thank you so much. If you can explain that to us in Spanish as well. La verdad que ha sido increíble. No tengo palabras para describir este campeonato como ha sido. Y todo esto solo quiero decir a mi equipo a los que me han apoyado, he trabajado muy duro para conseguir esto todo el año con todo mi equipo y todos mis entrenadores y yo quiero agradecer a mi abuelo y a mi familia y a mi abuela y esto va por ellos. Gracias. ¡Vamos! A massive congratulations, Carlos. Well done. Thank you. Well, might be out of breath, but it was a breathtaking performance from Carlos Cano to snatch victory here in race two and along with that, the European Talent Cup Championship. And this is how he did it. It was Christian Daniel Jr. that did get the whole shot from a second on the grid with Carlos Cano sitting a little subdued in the early stages of the race as Marco Morelli put a very audacious move on Carlos Cano, almost coming to contact, running over. Your new champion's foot into turn at number one. Morelli held the lead for a few laps, looked brilliant at the front before he came under some attack. Gonzalez and Cano, but once again, Marco Morelli, latest of the late breakers, ran a little bit deep into turn one, but held the lead for the time being. Valentin Peroni was part of the battle as well, however, he would slip back later on in the race. The 71 of Cano and the 11 of Gonzalez put a move on Marco Morelli, however, Morelli held, held on for a second at that moment. It was a 10 wheeler at the front as the race came into its closing stages with Marco Morelli putting that move on Gonzalez, which would have to do again a lap later after Gonzalez got back up the inside. But it wasn't just two, he got, he got, it wasn't just one, he got, he got two, but ran a little bit deep at the first corner. Morelli was back in the lead of the race a couple of laps later with the top five battling it out with Fernandez and Tinez, not really quite laying a glove 
on the top three. As we started the penultimate lap, Morelli charged through to the lead of the race, but Cano got the run out of the final corner to lead across the lane at the start of the final lap. Now this move here, we thought Morelli may have just run a little bit deep and pushed Cano out wide. However, Cano got the switch back and the drive coming out of turn 15, powering down the back straight. He had enough of an advantage without Gonzalez or Morelli being able to attack him into the final corner. And as he came across the line, we crowned Carlos Cano as the 2024 European Talent Cup champion with victory number six of the season as the team celebrated. It was a massive moment as the adrenaline was rushing, the emotions poured for Carlos Cano and the burnout proceeded. Guido Pini getting the vault as well. Came into the pet to celebrate with his team. As you can now see, Carlos Cano is the champion for 2024 and European Talent Cup. Well, 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 what a way for the championship to be wrapped up. The top three put in such a valiant effort, but Cano came out on top. And Connor, you were in a privileged position to get the initial thoughts of Carlos Cano. Yeah, How was it? It was fantastic. He looked absolutely exhausted after his efforts. And it was that man, Marco Morelli, that took it right to the line as well. Danny Gonzalez, another fantastic rider. But this year, in 2024, no one can take anything away from that rider, the ETC 2024 champion, Carlos Cano. Yeah, what a magnificent moment for Carlos Cano. You can imagine it will be the first trophy of many as Mr. Pedro Ribeiro, Chief Steward, hands over the team's prize to the winning team. And big cheers there for the 72 Motorsport Art Box squad. Another race winner's trophy for them to add to the collection in 2022. Marco Morelli, what a valiant effort in 2024. Tried everything, threw everything at it, but unfortunately just missed out. He'll take stock of that and he'll come back even stronger in the future Will Marco Morelli. David Gonzalez, another second place trophy for Gonzalez. That first win, you can feel is just around the corner. Can't be too far away for the young Spaniard. But victory number six of the season for Carlos Cano. And of course, the championship goes the way of the 14-year-old Spanish rider. And of course, he gets to celebrate with the Spanish national anthem. A round of applause as the team watch on after crowning Carlos Cano, the 2024 ETC champion. There they are with the rose water celebrating together. And what a race these three delivered. A wonderful podium. Carlos Cano, David Gonzalez and Marco Morelli. I was down in Parc Ferme when the race came to a conclusion. Morelli was the first one there, and he went over and congratulated the 72 Motorsport Arbox team, and that was a really lovely gesture from the Argentine rider as they posed for a photo on the podium in this, the penultimate junior ETC race in the FIM Junior GP World Championship. Here we have the final results then. Carlos Cano with the win, Gonzalez second, Morelli third, Tinez fourth, Benyat Fernandez in fifth, Julio Pugliese in sixth, Valentin Peroni in seventh, Christian Daniel Jr. in eighth, and Enzo Bayon in ninth. Rounding off the top 10, Jesus Torres in 11th, Marianos Nicolas in 12th, Gabriel Tessini, P13, belongs to Yaroslav Karpushin, 14th, Edu Gutierrez, 15th, Mickey Lou, 16th, Ignacio Galan, and in P17, Nikola Miroslavov.
Behind them in 18th, Matteo Gabarini, 19th, Finn Cratchwell, 20th, Luca Agostinelli, 21st, Yvonne Serpa, 22nd, Matias Rostagni, 23rd, Alfonso Almeida, 24th, Benjamin Cayet, 25th, Evan Boxberger. After them, Remy San Juan in 26th, 27th, Alejandro Fernandez, 28th, Fernando Bujosa, and not finishing, were Trucho and Alzina. And here we have then the championship standings. Carlos Cano, now an unassailable lead. He's first with 186 points. Morelli is second, Pugliese third, Gonzalez fourth, Valentin Peroni fifth, Jesus Torres sixth, Benyat Fernandez seventh, Zani eighth, and Kermantinez in ninth. Following them, Alex Longarella in 10th, in 11th, Palazina, 12th, Enzo Bayon, 13th, Gabriel Tessini, 14th, Seru Ikegami, 15th, Luca Agostinelli, 16th, Gonzalo Perez, 17th, Fernando Bufosa. After them, in 18th, Marianos Nicolas, 19th, Christian Daniel Jr., 20th, Pablo Olivares, 21st, Yaroslav Karpushin, 22nd, Benjamin Cayet, 23rd, Mickey Lou, 24th, Vasileos Pantaleikis, 25th, David Da Costa. 26th, Matias Tamburini, 27th, Edu Gutierrez, 28th, Mateo Gabarini, 29th, Rocco Sesla, 30th, Nikola Miroslavov, 31st, Remy San Juan, 32nd, Finn Kratokville. Well, we watched the championship celebrations on top of the podium. Carlos Cano celebrates as your brand new champion in 2024. And well, that is one well and truly happy team and a big name for the future. As we see Guido Pini, Alvaro Carpe and the rest of the team joining in on the celebrations. They're part of the Junior GP class. There he is, Carlos Cano getting celebrated like a rock star, crowd surfing on top of the podium. Well, the championship might be done and dusted and gone in the way of Carlos Cano. However, we still have the season finale to come in Valencia where Carlos Cano will be looking to add to that championship silverware with victory number seven in the class. We still have one more race coming up in stock European Championship here in Motoland Aragon, so do not go anywhere, but we celebrate in 2024, the 2024 European Talent Cup champion, Carlos Cano.